In today's video, we're using the pit barrel cooker and we're cooking a brisket. In three hours? Hey, this is Ricer from Dead Broke Barbecue of Wisconsin. And if you're new here, on this channel, we try to help you enhance and amplify your backyard barbecue fun. In today's video, I'm using the pit barrel cooker and I'm cooking a brisket. Now this was the first time I ever cooked a brisket in the pit barrel and I decided to do it hot and fast. What was I thinking? But it actually turned out pretty good. So grab your bag of charcoal, Brian, and don't forget your running shoes because we're cooking this brisket hot and fast. Today we're gonna cook a brisket hot and fast on the pit barrel cooker. I have a small 10 pound prime packer brisket that we're gonna season up. Starting off with just my salt, pepper, and garlic, and we're gonna go ahead and cover. I trimmed this up earlier. You guys have seen me trim a brisket on that Traeger cook, so I didn't wanna bore you with just cutting some fat off. This thing is pretty much just a glorified flat brisket with a little extra point. Point's not that big, smaller, but hey, it'll work. And today we're gonna use the Three Little Pigs Texas Beef Rub to give us that extra layer of flavor. So we're just gonna start out on the fat cap side here. And we don't need a lot. We are gonna do this on the pit barrel with the fat cap down, tap it in. We'll end up letting this sweat up a little bit so it ain't gonna come off. I didn't use any binders. Trimmed this up and I put it back in the refrigerator for a little bit. There's enough moisture on there. Flip it over and we'll do the same thing on the other side. Get our edges. This brisket gets a little thin on the other side here, so. And I also take and score the direction of my grain, so after it's cooked, I know how I'm gonna cut my slices out of that flat. All right, this brisket is all seasoned up, and now it's time to go start that pit barrel cooker. In today's cook, I'm using some Kingsford Professional Competition Briquettes. We'll see, it says it burns a little hotter and longer. Even if we're gonna try to do this brisket a little quicker today, I still wanna try it out. So we'll go ahead and fill up our charcoal basket plum full. Take some out of the center and throw them in our charcoal chimney. And these ones that fell on the ground, oops, we got some grass in there. No foreign contaminants, darn it. Clean out the center, and we're gonna just kind of move these around a little bit, so when we dump our, our lit charcoal in, it's got kind of a hole. Yeah! That should be good. Go ahead and take a charcoal basket, and put it right in the center of the pit barrel. All right, let's light up this chimney. Now this is the first time I've ever cooked a brisket on the pit barrel cooker, so I'm kind of excited, but I'm also crushed for time. We have things to do tonight, and I need to get this thing done. So that's why I'm doing the hot and fast. Okay, so my charcoal's ready. I'm gonna dump it right in that pocket that I made in my charcoal basket. All right, so then we're just gonna dump it right in the center, try to keep our coals in the inside. This is hot, so set it off the side. And today I'm gonna be using some cherry and some pecan for our wood flavor. Go ahead and put your wood right around those starter charcoal briquettes. Now I'm not hanging this today. I'm just gonna use my grill grate, so put your grill grate in. Put your lid on and give it about 10 minutes. We want this wood to start to burn clean. It's been 10 minutes and we're gonna put this brisket on now. And I start out and I take a couple chunks of wood and I put it right on the grate. That way I can dome up this brisket. I want that water to run off, not sit and pool up. You'll obviously get a little better bark from it. And with us trying to cook this brisket this fast, we're obviously gonna wanna try to develop some type of smoke ring. So take it, and how you put a brisket on is obviously how it's gonna come off. So we're gonna start out and put this brisket fat cap down. And then you're gonna wanna pinch this together. We wanna dome it up as best we can. Put the lid on and set a timer for 30 minutes because we're gonna rotate that grate 180 every half an hour. Okay, our first 30 minute timer is up. Let's go ahead and rotate that grate 180 degrees. Okay, so we're just gonna turn end for end. And remember, this grate's hot, so put something on your hands to protect them. Put the lid back on and we're gonna set a timer for another 30 minutes. Okay, so now another 30 minute timer went off. I'm gonna rotate it, but this time I'm gonna spritz it up with just plain water. All right, she's starting to look pretty good. We're starting to develop a little bit of bark on it. Might be also because we're running so hot and fast. But she's starting to darken up. I like it. Put the lid back on and set a timer for another 30 minutes. I'm gonna just check that baby because I know she's rolling, I can tell. She's starting to foam up. Oh no! Yeah, she's not doing too bad. Our 30 minute timer just went off, so let's give this brisket a twist. 
Uh, it looks like we're gonna be a little bit shy of the bark that we want, but hey, it's an experiment and we're just gonna go with it. We're gonna have to pull this off and wrap it up in about 30 minutes. Put the lid back on and set a timer for another 30 minutes. It's my next 30 minutes, I, I'm guaranteeing I'm gonna probably be wrapping this. Now this is a kind of a fun little test for me to see if there's a difference between a low and slow cook and a hot and fast brisket cook. I'm kind of excited to check it out. Okay, so it was supposed to be cloudy and now it's like crazy sunny out again. I'm gonna be sunburnt. I'm gonna look like a lobster. All right, so our 30 minute timer went off and that means we're two hours in. I'll pull this off. All right, so I'm gotten a lot of moisture on the top of it. She's starting to get a little jelloey too. I'm gonna pull it, wrap it up, and we're gonna finish it off. Okay, so how we're gonna do this, I'm just gonna make a little boat. I'll dump a little bit of beef broth and some mopping sauce that I mixed together and put it on top of this brisket. Make sure you put your lid back on. Just start closing her up. Okay, we're gonna put the brisket right back on the pit barrel. I'm also gonna take a probe and put it in the center of the thickest part of the flat. Get our wood chunks out and we're gonna set it in just like this. Okay, so we're two and a half hours in. Let's check it out and just see if how our probe is going in. She's almost there. I'm gonna say we got about another 15 minutes or so. I'm at 204. It's two and a half hours. It's almost unbelievable that it's only been cooking that long. We'll see. Interesting. This is by far the fastest brisket I've ever cooked in my life. I mean, we're at 208. I'm gonna be pulling it in just a couple minutes as soon as that timer goes off, so wow. crazy. It's not my first brisket ever. First one on this thing. <laughs> okay, so there went our timer. I'm gonna tell you it's done. I'm gonna pull our probe out, put it over here on the table. I'm gonna open up the aluminum foil and let this steam out a little bit. Don't take a brisket right off the cooker and then wrap it with a towel and throw it in the cooler because it's gonna continue to cook four or five degrees and you don't wanna go overboard on it. But here it is, got a little, few little woodpecker holes in it. All right, so we're gonna let this steam off and we're gonna see what happens. Not a lot of bark, not a real lot of dark bark. She's jelloey. You can see there's a lot of moisture in it. All right, well, we'll see. Crazy. I'm gonna wrap this brisket up in an old towel and throw it in the cooler and give it a two hour nap. And I'll be back when it's time to slice this hot and fast prime brisket up. All right, we've given it a two hour rest and let's check out what we have on our first pit barrel hot and fast brisket cook. So, she's tender. Not a lot of juice left in here. There's a little bit for mopping sauce that we'll go ahead and pour in. <laughs> There's nothing in there. Now we have our marks that I did earlier where we can slice up some slices here, which I did. Turn the cutting board so we can get to work. Well, pretty tender. She's flopping, pull test. Yeah, all right, let's try a piece out. It's got the flavor from the Three Pigs Texas beef. There is a little bit of smoke ring for only a couple hours under there. It's not a very predominant smoke ring, but there's some there. Still tastes good. Cut this point off. Carve right into this part. This is like butter, real good. With all that heat, Actually did a pretty good job. Cut this slice a little smaller for sandwiches tonight. Overall, if you're in a pinch, I'd say try it. Very tender, still good and juicy. Again, I didn't have a lot of time. I only had a few hours because we have things to do tonight. But if you ain't trying something new, you ain't gonna get any better. Again, for only three hours on that cooker, it does have a little bit of a red lipstick on it. I can't say I'm disappointed because it is tender and there is some decent juice in it but it's not like a low and slow brisket. I pulled this brisket out at 175 degrees. It might've been better just to finish it off completely right in the pit barrel. That might've made sense too, but it is tasty. But where'd all the juices go? Suck them all right back in. Usually we have at least a half a cup or better in our fat separator. This isn't dog food. This turned out pretty good. I am impressed that it was only three hours on there and I have a completed brisket. After I got all done trimming it up, it's about nine pounds, so it is smaller. So that's also a factor when you're putting that much heat in that fast. You might be asking, would I do it again? Yeah, I would. I just wouldn't ever use any more professional or high temperature charcoal in that pit barrel with the re-rods out. Three hours, that's phenomenal timing. 
but for sandwiches, it's great. You saw the bend, it was decent. If you like pepper, try out that Three Little Pigs Texas Beef Rub. You're gonna get a good pepper taste. Now let's read some comments from last week's video. A View to a Grill says, Ricer, great video production, ribs look good, take care. Now Johnny does all kinds of barbecues and I think he must have some type of chef blood of him because he can run a knife pretty good. Thanks for stopping by Johnny, I really appreciate it. And I tell you what, I'm gonna leave your link in the comments below and also leave a subscriber button at the end of this video. And our next comment comes from Cody Hydorn, and he says, Ricer, I'm happy to hear that you like the Meat Mitch and the Heath Riles sauces. Thanks for the shout out and letting your viewers know about the meat block. Keep up the good work. No problem, Cody. I appreciate all that you have done and have suggested to me in the past. Now the meat block has everything that the backyard barbecue enthusiast needs. They've got rubs, they got meat, they got barbecue equipment, and they got the grills and the smokers. Check them out in the links below and tell them that Ricer sent you here. Now it's your turn to leave a comment below because you never know, I might read yours in the next video. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and become a subscriber. Crush that notification bell so you can become a part of the Dead Broke Barbecue family. That way, we'll see you in the next video. Did I say set a timer for 30 minutes? Okay. Okay, so our 30 minute timer went off. That means this is two hours in, right? This is two hours. Thanks for the shout out and letting your viewers, viewers. Darn, you, darn, darn, darn. Sometimes words. <laughs> Can't say it with a chew in my mouth. Dang it. You're big. <laughs>